All right, good afternoon. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip on Friday, the 22nd of April. I'm back with Scott. Afternoon, Scott. Afternoon, Ian. Um, thank you for your patience. Kept you waiting for the well for today and for about the last month, to be fair. Um, thank everybody. I haven't spoke, it feels like ages since I spoke to anybody. Obviously, it was last week, Friday. Um, I did just have a bit of time off. Obviously, things haven't been fantastic at home, but we are coming, we're making progress. So um by the end of next week i should be fully back to normal and we'll get things back to how they were um but the dog has been given a stay of execution if you like and um saw a cardiologist this week and has got um some new medication he thinks that long term she will be all right he's having another look in a couple of weeks time but um I fully expected that to be all over on Wednesday, so that's good news. Yeah, um, news. Sam's brothers both making progress, one out of hospital, other one getting better. Um, so, yes, you know, whilst it's been a very tra- – I'd probably say the most traumatic time since my mum passed away, I'd say, the last month, um, has really been quite stressful and not been able to think clearly. But we're making progress and batting on. Um, so thank everybody for their patience. As I say, if you can just give me one more week to uh, Sam's off to Malta. We're going to pop down, see her brother before she goes, get a few bits done. And then um, I'll be on my own for two months and can knuckle down. Uh, and the football season will be over. So I'll have a little bit more time to focus on some other FTS bits as well. Um, but trading group, all that sort of stuff, that will be continuing through the summer. Don't fret. I haven't forgotten you. I've just, I just did need to. Um, step back and deal with stuff here a little bit more um, but we'll be back Mindset Monday will return next week maybe not on Monday might be Tuesday or Wednesday but it will return um, alright a lot seems to have been going on in the world of football and I have to admit a lot of it has passed me by um, I gave Ronaldo a bit of a digging out for smashing the phone I think that was last week um, obviously thoughts with him for very tragic news um, yeah. this week um, but before we get into today's matches, obviously we did touch on it very again briefly last week. Liverpool, Man United, you thumped them, Scotty boy. Yeah. Gave an absolute paste in misbehaving in your flat, upsetting the neighbours, I hear, causing trouble. <laughs> Flipping what yeah, you Yeah, my language was a bit freezy. Breach of the peace, stuff like that. Yeah. Flipping their noise pollution. Um, <laughs> I think they dread it when we play them. <laughs> so they, you gave them a pasting and then Chelsea, Arsenal... I yeah, mean, that was a surprise. Well, well it's not strange, because is it? I mean, Chelsea, when Spurs had something to play for in 2016 and went to Stamford Bridge, Chelsea had nothing to play for. Tottenham roll up there and it ended up in the Battle of the Bridge. You know, Tottenham went 2-0 up. Chelsea came back to 2 all scraps on the park. Chelsea absolutely desperate to make sure that Tottenham didn't get anything out of that game. Full-on scrap war. Oh, you know, right. There. This week, Chelsea, once again, nothing to play for. They're going to finish third. Um, but Arsenal roll up. And you think, well, they don't want to do their lung. Oh, no, it's like hold hands, ring a ring of roses testimonial, isn't it? Hey, our boys have the goals and this, that and the other. A absolute farce of football. Go on, lads, go on, go and roll it in the net. Go on, have a goal. <laughs> uh, absolutely dreadful. Just show everything I say about Chelsea going back to you know, when all this Russia war kicked off, absolutely bang on, absolute filth of a club. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, Spurs stuffed by Brighton. Of course, I've got some sticks, Scotty. Everybody all of a sudden talking about Potter ball again. <laughs> Let's be honest, they were shite, weren't they? Yeah. Tottenham was shite and Brighton was shite. Brighton weren't great. The game was absolutely fucking terrible. Yeah, they edged it, Brighton. I don't sure, know why people talk. Poor. I don't know why people talk about everybody wants to watch the Premier League. If you were tuning into that, I mean, they started wasting time from about the fourth minute. Keep her holding to the <laughs> ball, rolling around the floor any opportunity they get. Tottenham were absolutely abject. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not using the Brighton wasting time. Tottenham were just. Desperately bad out of the old Tom Bowler that day came. Let's the play yeah. shit, the let's play shit card. Um, but Brighton aren't fantastic. I'm standing by all this old, but there, there was no potable. They weren't Brazil playing Tottenham off the park. They just happened to nick a goal at the end in what was a fucking terrible game of football. It was, it wasn't uh, good. Uh, awful. So, yeah, good wins at Arsenal and Tottenham for them, obviously. 
And, you know, I thought, oh, got away with it with Arsenal losing at Southampton. Southampton then get beat by Burnley last night, put yeah. Everton right in it. Um, I mean, if Burnley beat Villa twice, Villa are right in it, aren't they? Yeah, they so, are if they do. Yeah. Leeds are still right in it, but I do, I do think. They, I mean, we've got a few members on there. I do think it's going to be Everton. I've said all along, Burnley will get out of it. I know they got rid of Dice, but I think there's a few people because of that would like to see him go down. But I just look at Everton's fixtures, and I think I absolutely categorically think Arsenal will get top four. And I've never really veered from that. Andy Richmond will back me up. I've never really veered from that. I've said all along out. The last three months, out of the teams involved, I think Arsenal are the most consistent. I know they had a few losses, but Tottenham yeah. have had losses. United can't beat anybody. West Ham ain't good enough. Wolves ain't good enough. I do think Arsenal get it. I don't think Tottenham will beat Arsenal in, in the North London derby, which may be the deciding game. But Arsenal will beat Everton on the last day of the season to send them down and secure top four football. Oh, and what must not here first. What must not happen then is West Ham winning the Europa League. So Arsenal, Chelsea and West Ham get there. Because as I said last week, I will be going into hiding them. What would you rather? Everton, um, Tottenham got top four and West Ham won the Europa or neither happened? No Europa for no, West neither, Ham and no neither, top four. Neither, neither. I, don't want, West that, Ham. I yeah. don't want West Ham to win anything. We've got, to, we've got to get out. And again, that top four is not a trophy. Mm. The only issue with them all getting top four is they're all gobby little shites and they won't shut up about it for 12 months. You'll have the Arsenal fans, eh, you'll have the West Ham fans eh, <laughs> around their jelly deals. The Chelsea fans do it anyway. So it's just to save myself a year of all that shite. But I don't want West Ham to win anything. No, I, I, I you know, get to the final, get beat, beautiful. That would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> that would be absolutely beautiful. But yes, if you said to me, can we have top four and or West Ham win that. No, I don't want it. I want I want them winning nothing. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It's not a trophy, is it? Tom, what's the, not being funny, we've had top four, Tottenham. What massive difference does it make to the club? Well, financially, it makes quite a difference. Yeah, but it? what does that make? To, what did that... The years we had in the Champions League, yeah, we got to a final experience there, but... On a footballing side, winning things, star players coming to the club, what did it do for Tottenham? Did we sign any world-class players? No. We went two years that we didn't sign a player at all. Didn't sign anyone, not allowed world-class players. Did we win any trophies? No. So Levy and co got a load of fat money. I don't, you know, yes, maybe enabled them to play people like Kane a bit more. But do you genuinely, as a Tottenham fan, if they get top four, see a tangible benefit other than the fact that you get to play games like Dortmund, this, that and the other? But we ain't going to go and win the league because we get top four or sign no. world class. You know, Mbappe's not going to walk through the door because Tottenham got top four, is he? No. It doesn't. You know, they say it enables you to sign better players, but we went two years without buying anybody. Um, who knows? But yeah, I'm not a massive one. I'm not a massive, not, you know. I think far. I think it's a shame that that's the not being funny. I think it's a shame for clubs like Arsenal, who you know, twenty years ago Arsenal were in the conversation of winning leagues, invincibles, yeah. this, that, and the other. Now they're all tugging themselves off if they get a flipping top four spot and pip Tottenham the fifth. I mean, that's how far they've fallen, and they get all excited. They, their biggest thing is being able to say they got sent Totteringham's Day or whatever they call it. They're all wank, wanking themselves off over that, as opposed to. You know, a team that used to win the league. I mean, we can't say that because we won fuck all for... I can't even remember the last time we won anything. So it doesn't really matter. But that that is their trophy. Or, oh, let's finish above them spuds. Let's finish above them spuds. Need to calm themselves down. <laughs> Pathetic, but that's what we'll have. And if West Ham win that, it'll be... Honestly, it'll be that. And I am going. I'm getting rid of my phone, email addresses, everything. Everything is going that night <laughs> if that if that did happen. It won't happen, but if it did. Yeah. Right. Let's get on to this week's game, shall we? Anything to add? Uh, no. No, good. I didn't know whether you had any news, anything, just any general oh, chit chat you wanted to cover. We'd be Man City in the semi finals to make another final. Huh? Obviously, we made it through to the uh, FA Cup final, beat City last weekend. What was the keeper doing? Oh. I, 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 only saw, I only saw it on um, Twitter. 
But what was he doing there? That was that was. Yeah, and I think that Edison may have saved saved Mane uh, our third Mane second as well. Mm. I don't think he may have been beaten by that either. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't really Chelsea and Art. I mean, that's just a piss of a cup final, isn't it? I'll just pretend that one didn't even happen. I will. Fucking hell. Yeah, all getting excited, you lot, aren't they, about getting that? Winning all four, all getting excited. I'm not. Well, yeah, I mean, I haven't heard from my brother, the one who's a dick, for about six months, and he put something in our family chat about, oh, soon you'll have to say Liverpool quadruple winners or something. Oh, here we go. Um, I'll, be, I'll be amazed if we do. Well, you won't, simple as that, because you ain't winning the league. No, I don't there. think we'll win the league. You might win the Champions League, I don't know. But Yeah, we'll yeah. make the final. I think um, it'll be you and you, you. Who have you got in the semi? Oh yeah, you've got Villarreal, Villarreal, City, yeah. City, Real Madrid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think it'll be a Liverpool City final in that as well. Oh, and then hopefully they give you a right slapping, and we can all enjoy ourselves. <laughs> right, let's do this week. Right, Arsenal, Man United. They're tra- terrible, aren't they? Aren't, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, they're the only team. But United can beat is Tottenham. <laughs> that's what I, <laughs> we can go there, score two, and still, oh, and they beat Norwich. I mean, that pretty yeah. much similar levels of crap. Um, I've got to go with Arsenal. I've got to just because United are so, so bad. And yeah. I know Arsenal had two or three um, bad defeats. You know, perhaps that come out of that now, and that's it done. I, I am going to maintain that the only game that Arsenal drop points in now will be the West Ham game. Oh, you think they'll win the rest? Yeah. Oh, or yeah. Well, they're going to beat they're going to beat Everton. I think they'll yeah. beat United. Tottenham are just terrible against top six sides, and and particularly when there's something on the line, we've just got a the Spursy bottle job tag. Um, so I I'd, I'd expect them to nick. You know, I'm not saying they'll stuff us, but nick it no. one nil or something. Um, and then they've got someone else dog in between, haven't they? So I'm going to go with the fact that Arsenal win this. Um, and just United are terrible. United are absolute garbage. They are. Um, what do you make of the, before we just leave this game, what do we make of the Ten Hag? I got me. I don't know. I know how well he's done at Ajax, but I've not watched Ajax very much. And I don't know masses about him. Yeah. I know he once let a. I know he once let a massive Champions League semi-final lead slip. Oh yeah, against yours, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I think um, they've got to give him time. You know, they've, yeah. they've gone through this. This is somebody. You know, he is a young manager, unproven Premier League, played really in another two-team league in which they are by far the dominant team. Yeah, it's a big jump in class. It is a massive jump, completely yeah. different league. I do like the football he plays, his teams, you know. But yeah, can he get, I that, always play good can he get that going in the Premier League? And, yeah. And, and it's just time, isn't it? They do need a massive overhaul. Yeah. You know, almost Spurs like hanging on to players who just clearly are not good enough. You know, yeah. people like Maguire and that just keep putting them out there and they just clearly are not good enough. No matter, no matter, you know, Football fans are funny. Like I sit there and go, Winks is shit, Winks is shit. And Tottenham fans go, Oh no, you're being hard on him. He's got he's shit and he and he will always yeah, be shit. Good. And he is terrible and he's proven to be. And you get it with United fans, oh, he's not that bad if United play a different way. Harry Maguire is nowhere near a Man United quality centre back. Not for where Man United want to be. No. Good enough for Leicester. Don't get that, yeah, but absolutely nowhere near where Man United want to be. And they've got a few of them through the team. And I mean, I haven't watched them, but everything you see is just, you know, I watched a bit of them against Everton and I thought they were just awful. Um, they were. And by all accounts on the game on midweek, you know, awful. Norwich, they only just snuck over again. A very similar Spurs game, Ronaldo hat trick, wasn't it? Exactly yeah. the same. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting. I think, you know, they've got to recruit better. Um, and give him a lot of time. It's as simple as that. But I can't see anything here other than Arsenal winning the game. Um, I'd love a draw personally, but I can't see anything other than uh, Arsenal winning the game. Uh, and I, I'm not going to uh, dwell. I just think it's an Arsenal home win. 
I said, look at that. Look, there you are. You don't even like talking about United anymore, do you? You just start like <laughs> just like just bid them, get get them done. Um, right, next is Leicester versus the old uh, Leicester Villa. Yeah. Um Villa, Gerard Ball. Seems to have, seems to have had a bit of a puncture, the old Gerard Ball, isn't it? It certainly seems to have. Um, Leicester have been a funny side this season. I had a look at this game because I thought they looked quite big. I mean, I'm I'm struggling to see how Villa are favourites here at 2.64. Oh, big time. But I'm assuming this is because Leicester have pretty much got nothing else to play for and are going to play kids with a focus on winning this conference league. Yeah. Which I find staggering. So it's a game that I have absolutely no view on. Leicester are better than Villa, for me, without a doubt. But Leicester look as if by that price that obviously they're going to be playing a different team. Would I want to back Villa at 2.65? I'll be honest, I'm still tempted to lay Villa at 2.66. Yes, I would be. uh, Against any Leicester 11, even if they put fucking shorts back on Gary Lineker, I'd still be probably a little (laughs) bit interested. But... uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a game, obviously, we'd need to see some team news. Yeah. Um, so I've got nothing in that at all, but I'll be surprised if Villa win. Yeah, I'm the same. I, I have got a bet in this, but um, I think a home win. Um, that when you look at um, record, left of record at home, be bottom half size is very good, winning five during one of the last six of their six so far. And Villa are a side that are wavy top half size, poor losing six from eight. Um, so I fancy a home win and I like goals in the game um, over two and a half goals the exchange 1.9 I think looks quite good less than seven of the last ten here this has landed and I like that against bottom half sides here this has landed the five of their six so far and Villa's recent form is good for goals with five of the last six of the league seeing this land and the last three away and also and away at top half sides this has landed five from eight so far too um, the reverse picture saw this land with Villa winning 2-1. And I like that seven of their last 10 meeting in all competitions, this has landed as well. So I think 1.9 looks quite a good bet for Overs. OK. So is that, is that an official bet? Is it That's yeah. official? Yeah, 1.9 yeah. the Overs. OK, no, 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 you don't care what teams play. You, 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 yeah, you, I'm quite happy because even if they did put a weaker team out, that should help the goals as well. Yeah, you're going on the fact that none of them can defend, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's the bottom line. I yeah, and I like the history as well, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Spurs score four against Villa. They can't be very good. Uh, <laughs> Man City-Watford. Man City. Or do, uh, you fancy, easy. do you fancy Watford in this one? Um, no, I can see 4-0. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. Three is Roy going to make it? Is Roy going to make it to the end of the season? I think he will. It'd be a bit silly getting rid of him now, won't it? Yeah. Uh, and what do you, you reckon? Just don't end, know, do you? End of the seat. They're going to get relegated. Yeah. Roy out at the end of the season. Sean Dyche in at Watford. It wouldn't be a surprise, would it? I could see that. I could yeah. see. Yeah. I could see. It. I whether think that'd he, be a good appointment. It would for them whether he'd go there, whether he looks at this and go, "You lot, get rid of managers every flipping." Yeah, three or four weeks, so I might not have that. But, but it might be a quick payday if that's the case, isn't but, it? Yeah, I mean this this I could see being an absolute pasting. Yeah, you know, I mean I know Brighton held out a bit of resistance the other day, but once they succumbed, they let three in. Yeah, they did, and they're uh, better than Watford. And I can see this if they get one early, I could see a cricket score. Yeah, I think I think you know City are, and I think they will be. Whereas earlier in the season, I was saying about City that you don't know what they're going to do second half because they are a team that like you know they're unpredictable on goals. Goal differences is, is coming to the into it at the moment. I think Liverpool have got a bit of a lead on goals. Yeah. Um. So these sort of games, they're going to be looking to to rack up five, six, yeah. seven. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I do. I think. I think that. I think this is one that, you know, back over eight and a half and trade. <laughs> you probably um, could trade it, couldn't you? Yeah. Uh, Norwich, Newcastle. Oh, yeah. Um, Nor- I've done, I, you know, I'm reluctant on the bets. I've had an absolute paste in following Tottenham and flipping Arsenal in the last couple of weeks. So, uh, uh, I could, But the thing is, they were they were understandable, those bets. But oh, yeah. yeah, I have, were, yeah, but, yeah. If, I, if I was having, if I saw the odds again, I'd have them again today. Yeah. It panned out. Um, 
The Poisson game for this came up 0-1 Newcastle, 1-1 or 0-0, which kind of tells you all that Norwich are absolutely desperate, aren't they? They are. Um, Newcastle, fair play. He's done, I've got to, you know, I, I said he was the wrong appointment, but he's he's done well. Uh, the midfielder, Grimaris, seems to have done well. He's he's talk of him going to Real Madrid after him. Yeah, I saw that. See this morning. Um, so, I haven't got a bet, but I think Newcastle will probably win this as well. I just think Norwich are desperate. Yeah, and I'm not going to be out of the bush. I think away win. So yeah, um, right. Next one up. Next one up. I don't want to get to the Spurs game. Oh, here it is. Right, Brentford Tottenham. Um, I don't know what to say. I honestly don't. I, it's they're they're just an absolute enigma to me that how you can be play the games like West Ham, Everton, Newcastle, where you look like you're going to score any time you got the ball. Yeah. To what they churned out last week, which well, you looked didn't like, like you're going to score it if it played another hour. No, it looked like they never played football before. Some yeah. of them. I mean, it just it was it was clueless, absolutely clueless. It was every part of it. You know, clueless long diagonal balls. Benton Kerr tried to play a couple of passes, nowhere near it. I know Brighton was slowing the game down and and getting in the, but just absolutely terrible. Um, Brentford have been half decent. I, I mean, I look at it and I think Brentford 4.5 is probably worth a little tickle. Yeah. Um, I, or laying Spurs odds on. I, I don't think Spurs will win this game. I think this will... I don't. Thing. I think the laying Spurs is a safe Yeah, one. I think I think you'd lay Spurs and it, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised at a sort of one or two all draw or if yeah. Brentford nicked it 2-1. I really wouldn't. I, whatever anybody said, and I know it's different personal on that, but this has gone on for so long with Tottenham now that they have just got this sort of bottle. Yeah, almost in their DNA, isn't it? Yeah, and, and until they can get through one of them, and, and their chance obviously was last week to beat Brighton and put some distance, and they didn't. Yeah. And now that's going to be on their mind. They're putting themselves under more pressure to perform. Um, and I just think, I, that's why I don't think they'll get it. I just think that bottle thing is in there, you know. And Arthur would have played Man United before, wouldn't they? Yeah, if it went to that night of Thursday the 12th, North London derby and... It was whoever wins qualifies. I am absolutely, you know, I, I know I've done a mortgage on Arsenal versus um, Brighton. And then I've done another one on them versus Southampton. <laughs> but I'm willing to go back to the bank for like, please, sir, can I have a third lot? It's definitely coming in this time <laughs> to have it for an Arsenal to get top four. And I would have a good bet on Arsenal to beat yeah. Tottenham on, on the night of the 12th. I do think, I do think that you'll see... Top, it's just history. We just don't do it. We just don't turn up. Um, and I think we show signs of it. And I don't, yeah, I, I think lay Tottenham. Go on, put me down. Lay Tottenham. Half a point, lay Tottenham. You talk me into it. Half I don't know how we're odds on. Stake or risk? Huh? Half, half point stake. Okay. I don't know. You've talked me into it. I don't know how we're odds on. No, I agree. I've got nothing stands out for me in this game. And the result wise, this is such a hard game to call. As Brentford with Ericsson have improved so much and play a Spurs side that have improved plenty under Conte. And yes, they are prone to a shocker now and again, like the last time out at home to beat the Brighton, which we've already said, where they were so poor. So which makes this tricky as Spurs will see where what well, were poor. So which is tricky is which Spurs will we see? Yeah. Uh, whereas Brentford are playing pretty consistent currently. So for the benefit of the pod, unfortunately, I think this is a reinforced fence comes out and I will go for the draw, which because uh, I can't see Spurs winning. No, right. There we are. Tom Bowler, Tottenham. What are you going to get? Who knows? But I expect a load of old shite. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to use your Tom Bowler because obviously it, that's, you've copyrighted that. But um, I... Uh, Oh, no, Andy Richmond put it on Twitter as soon oh, as did he? as soon as the final whistle went against Brighton. Tom Bowler, Tottenham, oh, <laughs> Potter, Potter Ball does well at the lane. Yeah, they couldn't help themselves. <laughs> Not like that. Either. I saw Elon. the headbutt um, gift that you did. It did make me laugh. Yeah, Elon Musk wants to buy Twitter, doesn't he? I think I might buy it and shut it down. Get rid of these imbeciles. <laughs> um, Brighton, Southampton next. Right, one point Southampton. I'll show you how fucking good Brighton are because they're fucking terrible. One point Southampton. Put one it on. point Southampton? Yeah. They're beating them. Even after last night? What? Performance? Yeah. yeah. Win one, lose one. They're in the win one, lose one, win one phase. It's like they beat Arsenal. Beat Arsenal, lose to Burnley. 
Burnley had to win. I hate that. Had to win. No, they had to win. They won because they had to win. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They won because they had to win. Uh, right in the garbage. Go on, then. Right. I do have a bet in this, but as far as the result, um, I'll have to go for a draw again. Uh, Brighton coming to this having failed to score in their last five at home and have and have scored in just seven of their 16 played at home so far yeah. and seen better suited to playing away. Southampton are very unpredictable at the moment and away are not that good, but with Brighton not that clinical at home, I think Southampton could get at least a draw as highly capable of scoring and have done in 11 of their 16 away so far. Um, so I've got a draw and it's my usual Southampton, but it's, a, it's, it's actual corners in the match. Um, Asian total corners over 10 at Bet365 go 1.8. Um, I like it that it's money back if there's only 10. Um, they're two good corner teams and it was close to doing uh, between Southampton to get five or more at 1.83 at 365. And this, and I obviously went for this market, so I like that I am not entirely relying on one side. And even nine corners to two is fine by us. And okay, it's more likely to be pretty even based on both stats. But still the cautious me favours this. Brighton overall this season are 57.6% for Levin or more. And here 50%. Southampton have seen 11 or more in 68.8% of their games. And I like that if we fail one for one short on 10, we get our money back. Um, Sport and index go 10.4 to 10.9. So you'd have to buy to get 11. So I like the safety of uh, knowing that 10, we get our money back. But yeah, I think corners look pretty good in this game. Okay, good. Uh, Burnley Wolves, half point on the draw. Half point on the draw. I sit down. I've got nothing to say about them. Wolves, Dallas Dishwater, but doing okay. Burnley, change of manager. Going to get themselves out of, going to be in the Premier League next season. And I won't, I won't go dwindle on this game. I put down uh, at the end. It's a game I won't go near with even a penny. But I need to give something as far as the pod, and I will go the draw yet again, as they did draw nil nil in the reverse fixture, and I see another draw again. So yeah, nil nil one one. That's all I see. Yeah, uh, on the Brentford game as well, it's probably worth a tickle on Ericsson to score because that would just be about Spurs. They're yeah, probably <laughs> yeah. A free kick or straight in from a corner. Watched him for years blasting free kicks into Rose Ed and not beating the first man with a corner. He'll probably score a worldie on. on <laughs> yeah, probably. That will sum uh, it up, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good luck to him. Love it. Just great to see him playing. Yeah, um, agreed. Chelsea versus West Ham. Half, oh, yeah. point, half point on West Ham. Yeah. If you've gone from being nervous about putting any on to all of a sudden there's four. I've got past all the shit teams now, Arsenal, Tottenham, and that now we're into Chelsea. What lost three on the bounce at home? Folded yeah, up. I think so, yeah. Really interesting that that um and they conceded four in a row and twice two games at home. Yeah, and really interesting the uh interview that he did. I, I was Andy phoned me yesterday to see how the dog was. He said, Have you heard two? I said, I haven't because obviously the dog was Wednesday and this, that and the other. And I said, I haven't. And then I dug it out this morning um, when I woke up. And it's like the ramblings of a madman. I started blaming the pitch and this, that and oh, the I other. I have seen it. Um, I started saying the pitch, the bounces on the pitch aren't, aren't right. And I, I was just like, genuinely like the ramblings of a madman. And I just oh, thought, right. you just sound like a bloke who's beaten, given up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, West Ham, I think, are going to want to keep it. You know, it's like the Leicester thing. I'm not a massive one for this changing teams and messing around when you're getting to late stage. It's different if you're Man City or Liverpool and I've got these massive squads. But what these teams need to build is some winning momentum. Yeah, they do. Um, So you just go into it fully confident and this, that and the other. Um, So I do think that West Ham, you know, that of course their eyes are on that Europa League, but they're going to want... To go into that, you don't want to go into that having lost your last three games or whatever. No. Um, so I think they're going to want to go into it. I think they're going to battle hard. And I think Chelsea are just a little bit off their game at the minute. You know, I think they've been off their game for a little while. I think maybe the Real Madrid sort of comeback game sort of overshadowed that they actually haven't been great for a while. Uh, and I think 6.6 is too big for the Amazon. Right. Kevin Kelly's just falling off his chair. Yeah, I would think so. I've got another no-bet game. As far as I'll, I'll go with Chelsea to win. 
At home, we top our sides. They've lost just two, but do come into this having lost the last two, conceding four in each. But West Ham away have not won against any side in the top half. And against the top eight away, have lost all six games, only scoring in two of them. And come into this having lost their last three away as well. So they are both not at the top of their game. But I think Chelsea are the, are the far better team. And at home, of course, so I'm going for the home wins, but I've got no money on it. So I hope I'm wrong. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, I hope I'm wrong, actually. I draw again. I like a lot of these guys I just like to see a draw. I don't want either of them winning, but I think... Well, they, I think they get a draw then. <laughs> I think they are too big. I think that's a bit short, that Chelsea 1.56. Um, Liverpool-Everton. Three-point win, Everton. No, I'm not. I'm joking. No. Yeah, I, I thought you probably were joking. <laughs> I didn't uh, no. even pick the pen up. Waste of time. I, don't even know. I genuinely don't even know why they're bothering the make the journey across the Mersey. They should just say, walk over 5-0, have the points, move on, and, and not put themselves through it. Uh, they're going to get battered. It's as simple as that. We beat battered. them 4-1 away. Oh, yeah, they're going to get... They're going to, I think City and Liverpool are just going to batter teams to the end of the season. I, they will drop points. I think, I think... I'll tell you where Liverpool are going to drop points. It'll be against Tottenham. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be when we come out of the Tom Bowler and play half-decent and end up like getting well, you did two, in the first home game didn't you yeah, so. and, like, and end up getting exactly like a 2-2 two, two draw again or something like that but other than that that's it but yeah and I'm not sure City might City might drop points at West Ham when they go down there but um, this is a yeah this one's a procession yeah I'm not good. I'm not, I, I just think it's a home win uh, I can see th- I, well I put on the score thing we do 4-0 uh, um, yeah 3-0 4-0 3-0, 4-0. Yeah, what's yeah. the old... Uh, yeah, well, uh, the three top plus on scores for this game are 3-0, 4-0, 5-0. Oh, right, OK. Uh, match odds, Liverpool, 1.13. Oh, and, that does sound low, but then at the end, I wouldn't want to be back ma- at it. Match odds away, plus on match odds away for Everton, 132. Oh, my God. That's done purely on performance, what they've done now. They've, they're, they're absolutely been garbage, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And yeah, Watford, I've got on my notes, they're 17th for a reason. I mean, Watford are away to Man City, plus on odds of 20, nearly 21. And Everton at Liverpool, 132. 3-0, That's 4-0. crazy, isn't it? 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, absolute. Just, honestly, I'd stay at home. Just ring the old Premier League up, put three points up, give them five. Give them five goals and move on. <laughs> Spare yourselves. I dread to see. I might even watch. No, I can't because I can't watch Liverpool. But that Michael Keane up against that lot, fucking hell. I mean, oh, that, oh, that was absolute garbage against. We score five past them. Yeah. Um, right. And then that leaves us with Palace, doesn't it? Yeah. Palace leads. Yeah. Um, I haven't really got a view on the game at all. I think Leeds are bang in trouble. I think it's the sort of game that Palace will think they can win and look and win. Palace haven't been great. Um, you know, bobbed around, beat Arsenal, and you think, oh, and then lose a couple. And yeah, yeah so I haven't got a I haven't got a view on it. If I had gun to my head, I'd probably grab a Palace victory. Yeah, and I've got another game I have nothing for, and as far as I'll, I'll go home win. Palace in the last two here have beaten Arsenal 3 0 and held Man City 0 0. And against bottom half size, they have lost. One home and one away. And I think they could be a lead side that have won just four away from 16 played this season. Last season, Palace won this fixture 4-1. And I think both sides have gone in opposite directions since. And OK, not sure we'll see such an easy home win, but I do think they'll win again. So, yeah, home win for me as well. Yeah, and Leeds have won three out of the last four. Can you see Leeds getting pulled into that down or do you think it's Burnley-Everton? I think it's Burnley-Everton. Burnley-Everton-Villa, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't actually think Bitter will get drawn into it. I don't, I just know it winds them oh, up. Oh, I know it'll wind them up, yeah. <laughs> <I'm just> not, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah I, unfortunately, I think it is, well, for Everton, unfortunately, but yeah, I do think it's between, I think it's only them two that are fighting for it, really. No, no, I do. I think, yeah, I think this weekend could be really telling. It's um, they've just got horrible fixtures, Everton. Oh, they really have. It's uh, They probably don't want to hear it, um, but... That's that's the facts of it. Um, right, that's it, Scotty boy. Uh, lots of people asked about Izzy. 
um there's messages coming up while i'm actually talking to you i, I did say at the start but no um saw a cardiologist on wednesday uh there isn't a tumor doesn't know exactly what the issue is but he's just adjusted her meds and given us two weeks um and she seems a bit better so fingers crossed that we can get away he did say that there's one condition which i can't remember which might require surgery if it does turn out to be that but he was a lot more hopeful than i was so yeah that's been a big weight obviously i was Definitely a sandwich, so happy a sand you. going away I was really because I thought, yeah, on your own as well. I'm going through the on my own without the dog. Sam would be upset, and yeah, so but yeah, no, things are on the way up. I do that as I said at the start. Thank everybody for their patience. Things are on the way up by the time we get to May. I will be Clooney esque back in full flow. I might even go back to doing pods every day for a few days just to catch people up. Not forevermore, but I might just while I'm on my own and I've got not got Sam and that here, I might just get up and do a pod every. You even got your Hollywood um Hollywood tan now. Oh, well, well, I have, yeah, because I've had to sit in the garden because the dog the dog pisses everywhere. <laughs> it's like honestly, it is it is like a hospital ward in here because the tablets that she's been on, like she's got some that make her heart beat stronger, and then others to like drain the fluid. And she just, bless her, she just can't control it. And I thought the only way I can, I actually set my office up. I mean, I Zoomed Dave yesterday, um, had a quick 10 minutes with Andy, and I'm sitting there, and they're going, oh, you're in the garden. And Alistair, I was on Zoom with Alistair for probably a good hour or so, and I'm like, I've got to sit out here because I can keep the dog in the garden and because she's just wrecking the house. It's just like the sofas have been, it's traumatic bless her can't do oh. out about it but hopefully hopefully two weeks they reckon that they'll be able to get hopefully stop those tablets so oh. then i'll be i'm super tanned and i yeah yeah i am just adds to the cluniest look son little bit a little bit of stubble i'm there i could just give me a coffee machine and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference <laughs> Right. Uh, thank everybody for their well wishes. You're a fantastic bunch. I will be back in the game. As I say, give me one more week. And we have got the FTS race card um, going out tomorrow. Just mentioned that. Uh, Andy's produced this. He did a he did Cheltenham. He then did a free one for the Grand National. Which was both uh, excellent. And he's doing six races tomorrow, four races at Sandown, one at Haydock, one at Ripon. Um, full pace maps, notes, symbols, synopsis on the race and a little guidance on how you may wish to bet or trade it. Ultimately, it costs you about pound twenty a race. Yeah, fab uh, value for the And effort. I think it's fantastic, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, from a guy who knows his stuff. So that is available. I've emailed out. It's in the Telegram group. Um, grab it because it will give you a good insight into how people who do win do it. Right, yeah. there we go. Arriva Dirchi, lovely to see you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Um Spurs beat Brentford. Brentford beat Spurs. I'll be gone incognito for a while again. <laughs> Particularly if Arsenal have beat United because they're starting to annoy me already. Right. Have a, how did they beat Chelsea, honestly? Old hands. Go on, have a goal, mate. Have a goal. Let's all stop Spurs getting anything. In you go. Score. Go on. Keep the lying down. Go on. Yeah, pathetic. <laughs> right. Arriva Dirchi. See you and I'll speak to you in the week, Scotty. You will. All right, guys. See you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.